Okay, yes, I've pressed it. Yep. Okay, you need to do anything. Perfect, it's recording now. So, uh, you know, uh, interestingly, uh, we've, you know, there's a lot of conversation that we all have, have us have been having about climate change. Uh, you know, last 10, 15 years, we've seen so many world conferences, so many conversations, so many documents that have actually come on climate change. Uh, but a lot of it, when, we, when it comes to people like us, we hear about climate change, but the numbers behind climate change are, is a lot of the time missing in the sense, why is a car better than the other car? Or why is car worse than a motorcycle? Uh, how is fish different from eating uh, chicken or chicken is different from eating meat? Uh, or for that matter, many of those things, as in, of course, that conversation could go to brand A versus brand B. But in this entire data space of climate change, a lot of it has come from an emotion space. And of course, evidence space also. So, you know, uh, uh, day before yesterday, there was a lot of rain that was there uh, that, that we had. It was, of course, made life pleasant for uh, everyone. But a lot of it is linked to climate change. So there's that established. But up behind this, there's a lot of data that has gone in establishing this, this phenomena called climate change. Uh, there's an organization called IGES in Japan uh, and UN Environment uh, which as an organization has been working with, uh, with these two organizations for a long, long time. Uh, last year, some of us got together. Uh, you know, there was, a, there was there's a very interesting report that Ashim would share on the chat box that is 1.5 degrees report that came a couple of years ago that talks about where should our planet be heading towards if we really need to stop uh, this, 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 this disaster that is happening. And in, in that, there are several countries that have been part of it and several countries that have, uh, that have participated, their data is there. Currently, it's a study between uh, five countries, so Japan, Africa, South Africa, Thailand, and Brazil. Uh, Brazil, these countries have come together and we're actually looking at climate change from two points of view. One is from a data point of view, really looking at government data uh, in terms of numbers, that how much is our footprint as a country, as a city, as an individual? So based on real evidence. So, you know, when we say that cars are polluting, we really need to bring that data from government of India or government of Delhi to look at how many cars and what make of a car actually pollutes more than, than the other. So uh, last six months, last eight months, actually, we at Swecha, we've been working and, and digging details of Delhi specific data or Delhi NCR specific data. Uh, and we, we, we are going to share with you some of our, some of our findings, Ashwin will take you through that. And in that we, we are looking at that if this is where we stand today, what do we need to do uh, you know, as, a, as a collective and as an individual to bring our, our collective footprint or individual footprint down? So after studying almost uh, 300 to 400 uh, data points, you know, behaviors that we're talking about, as I said, within, so we have several domains, there's food as a, as a huge domain in which we have actually calculated each and every dal uh, or, uh, or, you know, uh, every, every food has actually been uh, analyzed in terms of the, its carbon footprint and carbon footprint basically would mean water intake, transportation, many of those things. So you know, almost 300 to 400 of those data points have been analyzed. And on that basis, we have come up with a few options that you know, if we have to really improve ourselves as a society, as, as our, our climate, where should it actually uh, move towards? And what are those, those options that we actually have? So we will be sharing with you some of those findings. I think Ashim would like to quickly share with you uh, the genesis and a few slides, and then we'll come to a few uh, sessions now. Ashim, do you want to take us through the presentation? I've covered bits of it, but. Just a second, I'm just going to share my screen very quickly. Can you all see the screen? Yep. Yeah, so welcome participants. This is a participatory workshop in which we have uh, been mobilizing people for the last week, trying to get select group of people to be a part of this. And we're gonna be playing some very interesting 
uh, games based on the data that Vimlendu was talking about that we've been working on for a year to, to sort of collate and bring together. The idea is to um, reach a specific target and also get all of you to select certain low carbon lifestyle options that some of you may actually be even adopting as part of a household experiment if, if you do select to be a part of that as well. Uh, before we begin, uh, I, I don't know if we have time to do this with Nendu, but would we like to also just quickly get an introduction from everyone else as well? Uh, so yeah, quickly what we could do is that if everyone, because we have around 26, 27 people, if you can just share with, uh, you know, with everyone your name and in one word or two word, anything that comes to your mind when you hear the word climate or climate change or climate crisis, anything, just to, just to you know, uh, break the ice in this room and make it a little uh, less boring when, <laughs> in that sense. So it could start with whoever wants to start. Mithun, if you want to start, your video is on. Yeah, not a problem. Uh, I think uh, the first thing that strikes in terms of climate change is uh, the impact is not immediately detrimental to us, uh, if I can put it that way, but just the bits and nuances of the experience that we go through everyday life, right? Like one of the things that you mentioned, uh, that rainfall was a huge respite from all the heat that we were experiencing. And we heaved a sigh of relief, but at the back of my mind, I was like, this is unnatural, right? This doesn't work. Or, or the fact that uh, you end up having uh, out of season fruits, for example, right? Uh, very unexpectedly. Uh, things of that sort. So a whole bunch of things that we're experiencing right now uh, is very unnatural. Like as kids growing up in India, right? We had certain months that we knew ki is time pe barish hogi. So we'll enjoy the rains during this month, right? Is in in mahino mein bahut garmi padegi to you stay indoors and you had experiences around it. You associated TV with it. And uh, specific months for December, for winters and so on and so forth. All that is out of the window, right? Because you really don't know what the weather would be uh, from one moment to the next. So I think, like I said, right, in the beginning that uh, it's not immediately detrimental, uh, at least at face value when we look at uh, climate change uh, around us. Uh, but there are these lot of bits and pieces that you can easily identify that this is definitely not normal, right? Uh, I mean, that's these are the couple of things that I have personally noticed around me that tells me that there's something majorly wrong going down, right? Next, whoever wants to go. Hi, I'm, I'm Deeksha and uh, I think the fact what reminds me of climate change right now is the fact that we are only in March and it's already so hot. So it's it's a reminder every day. And just a simple fact that climate change for me is as personal as political. As in it's not a political thing only. I think it's extremely deeply personal thing. Okay. okay. Next, let's keep it brief, uh, as brief as possible because we have 30 people now. We could use a chat box uh, as well. Please. Yeah, I think that might help. Uh, yeah. You could all just quickly introduce yourselves in the chat box if you're not feeling comfortable turning your video on. Uh, yeah. You just have to say your, tell your name, share your name, and what comes to your mind when you hear the word climate or climate change. Hello, am I audible? Yes, yep. you are. Hello. Yes. Okay, so my name is Anand Dube. And the two most important things that comes to my mind uh, when I'm hearing climate change, that is a very important topic to deal with and a very fast changing topic to deal with because it is the pattern is changing very rapidly. Thank you. Perfect. Next. I'm Mithun and Lim Ledu. May yes. I go next? Yes. This is Vicky. Uh, yeah. Well, for me, climate change is that I don't remember the last time I saw, I saw stars in the sky. It might sound, sound very romantic, but the fact is it is not. Uh, uh, and especially if you talk about personal life, I, was, uh, I still remember those days when we would put our cots outside and sleep. And I don't think that's ever possible given the air that we breathe. So that's a deeply personal as well as a political uh, issue for me in terms of climate change. Hello, may I come in? Yes. Okay, okay. I'm uh, Susan, and to me, I'll be as brief as Jim request to us to be. To me, climate 
crisis means environmental disruption, destruction <laughs> as well as disruption. That's what it would mean, a climate crisis. Okay. Thank you. Hi, uh, my name is Rohit. Just wanted to add in, uh, climate change is real and it's happening right now. Yeah, as in Trump would feel sorry about it, but yes, it's okay. <laughs> next. Uh, I'll go next. Yes. Yeah. So myself, Brinda, and one thing that I would want to say is it's like urgent need of change in behavior is what is needed right now. So if I can go next. Sure. Sure. Think about climate change. I think it's not a style change that all of us have to do if you want to do something better. Okay. I'll go. Um, my name is Aruna. And um, two things that comes to my mind when I think of climate change is uh, inequality and uh, a threat to prosperity. Okay. Next, please. Hi, my name is Anuja. And um, when I hear the word climate change, I immediately think of my children's future. It's like a major uh, mood swing tantrum going on with the climate change. The, you know, the universe is really repelling. So we have to do as much as we can to make their future better. Thank you. I think we can take two more maximum responses and then we can move forward. Yeah, I'll go next. I hope I'm, aud I'm audible. Yes, you are. Yeah, I use, I use this site. I just wanted to add one thing that nature is uh, like... Hello? Yes, yes. Go we can hear you. Yeah. Yeah. Nature is uh, like... Um, I wish we can't hear you. Maybe you can type your response yeah. in the chat box. Should we proceed further? Yes. Next person, please. Anyone? Last you can take. Uh, I can go. Sure. Okay, I'm Oritro. Uh, I think uh, uh, somebody just mentioned it being a very personal thing. Definitely. Uh, and there are a couple of answers that came in which talked about the future of our children and things like that. Though I, I don't have children, but I can uh, vouch for the fact that a lot of my friends who have children, they are worried and they should be worried rightfully. Uh, it's also personal to me because I have seen the changes in my father's gardens and my friends' houses and our cityscape uh, as a whole. So it's, it's something that we should be talking about every day. And uh, only then, I think it's something that uh, would probably be assertive in terms of policy change and things like that. And uh, look forward to more conversations and uh, uh, hoping for action. That's what it is in my head right now. Perfect. So very interestingly, as in, you know, if I just take a couple of points uh, that some of you have, have shared, as Vicky was saying that, you know, it's about that missing stars, for example, as in that's breaking down this entire climate change from what is climate change at the end of the day? Is it name of a tree? Is it name of a bird? Is it, uh, is it is, you know, actually at the end of the day, climate change breaks into our own life experiences that we actually have around us. Uh, and I should share with you that, you know, when we started our work 20 years ago, we never started, you know, we, we never used the term climate change because for us, that change in the river is climate change, change in the tree uh, count of Delhi is climate change. So climate change could be a new topic, but our changing water, our changing rainfall, our changing forest cover, our changing air quality, all of that together is climate change. And what Susan Mann uh, said that, you know, it's, it's actually disruption. And very interestingly, what Diksha, for example, oh, Diksha, for example mentioned that it's actually a very deep political issue and it's an intergenerational issue, what Oritro you also mentioned right now, that it is not just about today. A lot of our worry is not about 
you know, why should we be concerned about climate change because it affects my next morning, but it affects the next generation. So it is, it is a question of intergeneration and the other is intersectoral. So we might think that it is only one thing that is, uh, that is cause, causing climate change. It is a lot like, you know, if, if I could just uh, use one example of this entire farmer protest that is happening in our country, we might think farmer protest is only about one thing or many of those issues, water, you know, Yamuna today, uh, there, was a, there, was a, there was an image in, uh, in ANI yesterday of this froth in the river, uh, you know, huge froth in the river, or there was, there was an image from last week about Bangaluru, where uh, the lake was, uh, uh, Belandur was on, was on fire. All these issues, be it the farmer protests that I'm talking about, or the issues of farmer distress, or of a burning lake, or of polluted this thing, all of that is linked to the strain that we actually have on our, on our natural resources, or it comes back to this fundamental question that this entire research study or this entire conversation is about consumption. And consumption in terms of our extra consumption is one thing and our consumption at the cost of the other. So like how Aruna mentioned that it is a question of inequality and I would take that thing one step forward and say it's a question of inequity, not just inequality in the sense because you know, climate change affects uh, poor people more, poorest people the most. So it might, you know, we might find a solution to a sweaty heat wave outside, but in that heat wave, someone is going to die or the input cost of farming will go up because of climate change. Or if a river runs dry, it's going to be a different kind of an impact. Or if there's a cloud burst that happens in Uttarakhand on, on a winter month, all of that uh, actually is because of climate change. So uh, when we, before we move forward, we need to establish one thing as, as a group and tell me if we accept this, that rather than looking at all these events as isolated events, we end up looking at Uttarakhand as a one accident, Belandur as another isolated event, locust attack as, as an independent attack, we might think COVID also as an independent uh, issue or air pollution as an independent issue. First thing that we as a group or we as a civilization need to do is to look at all of this together. This is all interlinked that, that, we, are talk, that we are talking about. It's all, these are all repercussions, impact, uh, or, or things that's happening because of uh, climate change. These are not isolated events, randomly ek cheez kahi ho gaya. And the other is the impact of this is going to be long term and it's already showing. So as uh, Ashim is going to share with you uh, some of the some of the statistics that he's actually pulled out. Ashim, you could share with us some of the India's uh, specific heat uh, data that we, that we actually have. It clearly shows that you know India, although it's, although India's carbon footprint is not too much, as in America uh, and Europe, average carbon footprint is much more. But India still is the seventh most affected country because of our own vulnerability of how the population, almost 50% of India's population or more perhaps depends on agriculture, depends on basic irrigation, depends on rainfall. And I'm only talking about one sector here. Similarly, perhaps many of the other sectors also are directly dependent on, the, on, on, on our climate. So, you know, like uh, Ashim, if you could just share with us these points, could go take us through these. Yeah, so I'm just going to go slide back for everyone's reference again. Uh, just a second. So this is looking at again our GHG levels emissions as of 2014. If you can see here very clearly, uh, our country is the fourth largest emitter after China, United States, and the and the EU. Uh, right here again, as as recent as July of 2019 was recorded as, as the hottest year ever. Uh, we saw 74% of extreme rainfall events, forest fires were 113% more numerous than uh, previously before. Again, India ranked fifth most vulnerable to climate change effects in a study among 181 countries that we're talking about. Um, so once again, just talking about how all these things are very much interlinked to each other when we look at whether it's forest fires or you look at uh, water pollution, flooding, many different things, a drought prone areas, highest ever temperatures recorded in a single year, 
Uh, this is something that we've been facing year on year on for the last decade or so. Uh, severe heat waves gripped over 65% of India's population, for example, in, in the year 2019 itself. Um, here are a few more statistics to clearly establish the fact that we are going through a major crisis right now. Um, so, for example, again, 68% of India's greenhouse gas emissions come from energy production, which remains largely reliant on our coal power plants today itself again. Uh, in, in 2016, the country reported the highest number of deaths due to extreme weather conditions. Uh, 11 out of 15 of the last years have actually been recorded as warmest years between the period of 2002 to 2018. 2018 was also the third consecutive warmest year after 16 and 17. And again, in 2019, uh, we recorded the highest temperatures. So you're, you're seeing a clear a, a, a pattern that's emerging in the last decade or so, where year in, year out, we are facing these challenges across different uh, verticals of environment, across different areas of environment itself. Um, again, major metropolitan cities, we've been hearing this in the news, Chennai, just a couple of years back, actually had a major water crisis, ran out of groundwater. Delhi was set to face the same situation in 2020. Along with Bangalore, Chennai, Delhi, many major metropolitans are actually set to run out of groundwater completely by 2030 itself. Uh, was someone saying something? Sorry, I think there's some disturbance that's coming in. You know, drastic changes in forest ecosystems have already had a profound implication on, on biodiversity, soil, industries, livelihood, water resources, and overall agricultural productiv productivity that we're talking about. So several challenges that do exist. These are just a few stats to introduce you all. I'm sure most of us, based on the conversation that we've been having right now and, and uh, things that all of you have been saying in, during your introductions as well, it's very clearly established that there is a major, major climate crisis uh, particularly in our country as well. And I think uh, part of it is to get to the consumption aspect, which is the broad basic that we're going to be discussing today and understanding our own carbon footprint, our individual carbon footprint, and how can we as, as individuals collectively work on bringing that down. Uh, Vimlendu, would you like to take it over from here? You're on mute, Vimlendu, you're on mute. Yeah. So if you could go to slide next and next. So we, we, have, we have looked at, uh, you know, five broad domains uh, and next. Uh, actually, as in order to go to the previous one because the two is missing here. So, uh, you know, based on our research, and this is based on global research, actually, uh, there are five broad domains, actually six, but, you know, we're only talking about five right now, that has the major impact. So, you know, different things affect differently. Mobility or transport or the way we move from point A to point B is a major, major source of carbon in that sense. So we, are, we have identified, and this is not just us, but several reports globally, including of the UN environment, of IPCC, have actually identified these different, different things. So one is mobility. Uh, second is housing. Where we live, how do we live, is extremely, extremely uh, important and has a huge impact on, on, on our lives or on our, on our, on our planet. Uh, third is leisure. So how do we move? Where do we stay? How do we actually, you know, right now when we talk about aspiration uh, of, of human beings and then we look at how do we spend our leisure time or how do we actually have fun or fulfill our aspiration that again with the growing middle class that we actually have in countries like India and already grown and bloated uh, class that we actually have in Europe and America, that's, that's a huge, huge carbon footprint point. So, you know, one point before I share with you two other uh, areas uh, of other thing. Please understand that a small country like, say, a Norway or Sweden, or for that matter, in, in Europe and America, that actually has a huge carbon footprint. And when we, as a 1.25 billion country uh, population, if you want to join? Wants to wants to ask. Can you put yourself on mute, please? Okay. okay. Sorry. Mute you. Uh, so if we we become aspirational and start consuming as much as say an average American does or an average European does, situation is going to be really bad. And that is something that's actually already happening. So the reason why India needs to talk about it, although India is number four, number five, number six, or India's per capita uh, carbon consumption or footprint is way, way low, lower than, than an average American. But imagine how it multiplies uh, in many, many ways. And India's 5% of India's population actually almost contributes to 95% of environmental destruction. So that's 
that's very, very important. The reason why we have this call on Zoom, the reason why many of you are selecting this, not to make you feel guilty or responsible, and it, it includes people like me and Ashim and everyone else who is here on this call from Swecha, our footprint is way beyond. Each of us actually consume and have footprint equivalent to at least at least a thousand or five thousand people or an average person that is there on the street in that sense. So that's the context. So we will talk about mobility. We will talk about housing. Uh, we will talk about uh, le leisure. Food is ex another important domain uh, that is there. Ashim, do you have a slide in which all the five are there? Are there three of them that are here, uh, which are broad distinct, but we'll get into the different options. Yeah. So, so, uh, so, uh, uh, so, 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 uh, that's another domain in which we have actually uh, looked at doing this. We are just going to share with you so that you understand that this is uh, this is all scientific. Ashim, if you could quickly share with them our, our data sheet only for them to just have one look of how we have calculated the entire uh, footprint. Yeah. And this is from all the countries. We'll just quickly share with you India, India uh, numbers and the domains what we have looked at. Can you all see the screen? So in this, and just to, you know, because there are many, this is a huge list. Yes. So within housing, for example, we've looked at electricity, energy, water consumption. Within mobility, we've looked at aeroplane, uh, three-wheeler, two-wheeler, walking. Within food, as I said, we're looking at beans to the kind of oil that we choose, to the kind of cereals that we, that we use, to meat that we use. So let's quickly scroll down. Yeah. Just, this is the sense. And this is all based on, if you see this data, and perhaps we can share with you our findings once the report is out, it clearly talks about footprint. It talks about unit that we consume in that sense, and the entire greenhouse gas intensity. So on the right side of this, all this data actually has come from, if you see NIC.in and GAG intensity, and uh, it's, it's all very scientifically done. Uh, so we'll share with you in, in due course of time and when we finish this entire research and action research across these almost whatever 300 that I said uh, domains. Now, uh, as we were saying that, you know, it's important that we do something about this and our governments do something about something it. About uh, very quickly, we want to take a small tiny break here. Uh, Ashim is going to share with you one small sheet which is a Google form, which I think you can, if you're on your mobile phone, you can log in. We'll take a five to seven minutes break. You have fill that Google form you, uh, form right now. It's only an indicative understanding of how much footprint do we actually have. Uh, questions are fairly simple. Ashim will, when you see the sheet, you can, you can, you can figure. It's questions are about, do you know how much is your electricity bill? Uh, do you know how much do you travel, uh, you know, if you need to look at what's your car travel time uh, daily or annually? It will just give, you know, the reason why, of course, this data that you fill, fill in will give us a pre-intervention understanding of where do we stand as individuals, but also gives us a food for thought to understand that ye bhi hai aisa. as in, do you think it matters how many kilometers or what? What dal do I eat or what bulb do I use or what clothes do I wear? Uh, it will only take you five minutes. Perhaps it will give us a uh, better understanding. So Ashim, if you could just quickly yeah, share in the chat. I've shared it in the chat box for everyone. Yes. There's a, so Google. we'll take a small five minutes break because we need to discuss this. And as I said, it's a participatory uh, workshop. If you could just fill this form and then we'll all assemble back again. Please don't run away because we've given you five minutes free time. Uh, I'm just going to put my camera off. Five to seven minutes stops. It's yeah, I think it takes longer than five minutes. Yeah. 6.32, yeah. so if I say we will assemble again. Please click on that form there. Does every, can everyone see the submit button? Button. Perfect, yeah. <laughs> so six, 640, we are meeting back once the guys have filled in the form. Yeah?
Ashim, you have to let us know when uh, the sheet gets up. It's on the chat. You can click on the link. No, no, I have, I have clicked on it and I have submitted it, but there's no prompt which tells me that it has been registered. Uh, I'll just have. I'll just take a look once and see if you have huh. Yeah. Sounds great. Thanks, man. I haven't got your uh, response in yet. Pranav's response has come in. I have one response that's filled in. I'll just refresh and see.
Yeah, I think it's done now. Thank you. Ashim, is everybody's responses come? Uh, right now we have three that have come in. Five, five responses have come in. Refresh, I think. Uh, can people yeah. just men uh, mention yes if you have done it? Uh, response. Yeah, I've done it. Yeah, Ritro, we got yours as well. Yeah, thanks. Dan Ashim, got it? Thank you, Susan, ma'am. Yes, I've received yours. Thank you. Done. We'll take one more minute and then we'll. Ashim, should we? So that people can. We'll take two more minutes. Yeah, so now we've got 14 responses out of 30. So we're almost we're halfway there. But uh, give it another two minutes. People can keep filling it in and we can continue the discussion also. Two minutes. Mm -hmm. it, uh, it is lengthy and it takes a little time. Yeah, yeah, so maybe. Longer than five minutes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's a lot of. Uh, numbers and stuff you gotta fill in. Sure, sure, not a problem. We'll take two, three, four minutes more. Ashim, you want to share the screen uh, so that I, as people are filling in, or you want to wait for one more minute and then share the screen of uh, the findings or the responses. Yeah, I shared it so everyone can keep seeing as things are getting filled in. You want to refresh it first, or we can end it and then refresh it maybe. It's getting updated as and when, so I don't need to refresh. Oh, perfect. Yeah. Okay, so let's quickly, uh, while people are filling it in, if it's not a disturbance, can we continue uh, 
talking about this? So uh, Ashim, if you could just scroll up to the, uh, the top and then, yeah. yeah so a... this is where, this was, this is what the first question actually was, uh, you know, how many persons living in your home? So most of the, you know, there are uh, five responses, which is about two people. Uh, and there's only one response, which has eight per, uh, persons, right? So mostly we're talking about smaller families. Four is the average in that sense. So four people families is what most of the respondents here actually uh, are. Uh, there's only one person in which it says only me. Uh, from a floor uh, idea point of view, again, these are the different responses. So almost like you know, 3,200 square feet to 2,000 square feet. Uh, some people say two BHK. So from a from area point of view, again, this clearly shows that although if you if you compare question number one and question number two, uh, if you could just uh, you know make it smaller so that we could compare both, uh, Ashim. Uh, if you just in, decrease the fonts, uh, you know screen size, then both the responses come on the screen together. But anyway, so we're talking about you know two people or one person or on an average four people, but mostly two thousand square feet or three thousand square feet kind of. Uh, homes that we all are talking about mostly and 3 BHK, 2 BHK. So although there's only one person who lives with eight people, but most average uh, that we're talking about is almost around 800 square feet per person is our overall footprint. As in we can, when we, when we analyze this, because we're doing it in a quick way right now, so maybe we are not uh, accurate, but a lot of our response is of Per person per square feet area of house housing that we have comes to some around 800 square feet. Now that's again uh, the reason why I wanted to point this out is that when we started this conversation, the climate change is not just about climate impact or climate crisis, but is also about climate equity. Clearly, 30, 32 of us here actually live in bigger homes. Uh, how many people in Delhi actually would have per capita 800 square feet? home uh, is, is, is something that we need to also ask. 40% of Delhi lives in slums where a slum would be, you know, 12 feet by 12 feet, which is what, 144 square feet in where family of four live. Uh, another 20 to 25% of Delhi lives in low income group uh, category, where again, their total size of home is around 18 feet by 18 feet or say 20 feet by 20 feet which is 400 square feet. So almost 60% of Delhi's population by these two parameters that we said is like, you know, living in 600 square feet per family where per capita of, of an average, if it's of four people living there, it comes to around 150 square feet per person or way, way less than that. Uh, again, uh, this response that what is the kind of energy that we use? Uh, all of us, 90% um, of us actually use conventional energy. Uh, someone said green or 100% green. There's no one who said 100% green, but there's rooftop and 30% green response that we also have, which basically means that if there are 20 responses in total, Ashim, how many responses do we have? 20, 20 as of now. Out of 20, 18 people use... Uh, uh, conventional and one person has green and one person has rooftop. Perhaps maybe in our discussion that we that will follow after this, we can actually clarify from the respondent in terms of who is uh, what is that green and is green different from rooftop that we're talking about. But again, this particular question, largely as we see, is dependent on what the state provides. It's very very different. This response is different from many other countries is because in other countries, you can actually choose, select your service provider of electric, electricity provider. In our country, we don't, as in our, select, our electricity provider is Adani or, or Ambani. Uh, it's not, a rely, it's not uh, you know, green or non-green or coal or something, but in many other uh, countries, you can actually choose uh, whether you want conventional energy, coal-based energy, wind energy, or, or renewable energy. Uh, now, do you know the amount of electricity your household uh, consumes? Of course, almost 50%, 55% they know. Uh, again, this again talks about the privilege uh, that many of us have. People who actually have the maximum control over climate change 
or who actually have maximum impact on climate change are a lot of times not aware of their own action and something as fundamental as the most polluting thing is energy both energy consumption but energy production and therefore energy consumption and almost 50 percent of us or in this case we're talking about 45 percent of us are not even aware of what our overall electricity consumption is again not to make you feel guilty but these are just a reality check for all of us to understand that why have we actually arrived at this climate uh, you know uh, i would say stupidity uh, as a civilization can we go next Again, if yes, please indicate. Of course, fifty percent people didn't know. Uh, fifty percent who knew, uh, they've they've said five hundred to four hundred to six hundred fifty, uh, hundred twenty-five, hundred. I'm sorry, I I don't know. This data uh, unfortunately doesn't look correct. Uh, uh, you know, a three thousand square feet house will not have hundred to five hundred rupees uh, electricity bill. Uh, I don't want to contest this. Maybe you guys live without electricity in our homes. But if I was a respondent here, uh, because I'm not respondent because I'm facilitating this, uh, average electricity bill of people living in Delhi, like you and I, at least my electricity bill average almost comes to around 5,000 rupees or 3,000 to 5,000 rupees, depending on the time of the year. And uh, if there are guests or if there are, if we are traveling. Or not. So somewhere that, that date, that response that we actually got uh, from people that 200 rupees and 300 rupees is, I think it's not right, but we might perhaps contest this in, in, our, in our conversation. Um, do, the other was, do your household members use room heating, water heating and cooking at home? If yes, which type of gas? Uh, of course, 50% people say yes, they use, uh, we use heating. Imagine 75% of us actually use heating, be it what room heating or water heating, using geyser or or otherwise so uh, and still if our bill is only 100 rupees a month or 200 rupees a month that again this data this is correct yes most of us actually have uh, heating facilities although we are not europe where there's central heating or central cooling in that sense but there is access to cooling and heating that we actually have uh, in, in our homes next question again do you know the amount of gas we are using a uh, very known response from all of us and very honest response that 45% of us don't even know what is our gas bill. So we don't know what is our electricity bill. We don't know what is our gas bill uh, in that sense. Imagine that the other aspect of this, uh, this response is that a lot of elections are fought in our country on gas prices or electricity prices. But this, this traitor that we all are in, we don't know what our electricity bill is. We do not know what our, our, our gas bill is. And we are the ones who, with the maximum carbon footprint, which we'll actually calculate later. Next. Uh, again, I think some responses have come, which is linked to the previous ones. So we can actually move, move forward. Uh, do your household use kerosene? Of course, uh, we don't use kerosene because now it's, you know, in India, kerosene is almost banned in, in several parts. In, in New Delhi, for sure, we don't use kerosene. You know, amount of uh, kerosene you're using, so that response is linked to that. It's a little not, you know, relevant to India in their question. So kerosene could be out of our of our of our conversation, at least in urban India. Uh, amount of water that again, very important thing. Although we need to understand that you know, water directly use of water is directly not linked to carbon footprint in that sense. Uh, because in, in the case of water, there are two things, the amount of water that you use and the amount of energy that is, that is used to transport water from point A to point B. So, uh, you know, when, when we say that the water is coming in my South Delhi home, it is actually coming from somewhere in Himachal or from, say, perhaps Ganga Canal somewhere, or at least from 50 kilometers away uh, from, my, from my house. So the energy used to pump water from the, from the water works to my house and pump sewage back to, uh, to, to the river again, that, is, that consumes a lot of energy. And overall, of course, uh, it's an environmental, it has a lot of environmental impact. But from a carbon point of view, uh, water doesn't have as much carbon, water consumption doesn't have so much of a carbon footprint. And we'll talk about it in our research. But again, interestingly, 42.5% or 42.9% of us, which is 43% of us, are not even aware what our 
water bill is. So it's a huge thing. We 50% of us don't know our electricity bill. 50% of us, almost 45% of us don't know our gas bill. Almost 43% of us do, don't know our, our water bill. Uh, from a car, car point of view, if you want to scroll up a little. Yes. So how many kilometers do we per week do you usually use a car? Uh, almost 50% of them have said that, 50 kilometers. 50 kilometers came from three. And on an average, I think a lot of responses have been towards 20, 50, uh, less than 10 have been a few. Uh, 150 kilometer per week. 50, uh, this response we need to, I think the graph making has been a little skewed here. But uh, of course, it's a lot of a lot of it has been around 50 kilometers of personal car. Again, mobility. Uh, before we move forward, mobility is a very very important aspect. So what we're doing through this workshop today is breaking down what are those those climate change points or what are those pressure points on our on our planet to our own individual small little behavior of what gas and what heating and what energy and uh, and what car now. The next question was, what are the type of vehicles do you mostly use? So 71% of us use uh, petrol or, or diesel. 23% uh, use light vehicle, uh, which again would mean a smaller car, but of course light vehicle would be, would be run uh, by gasoline. Uh, nobody uses a hybrid. There's someone who uses bicycle. Of course, light vehicle would mean a smaller vehicle, but very small population actually uh, three to four percent actually use uh, bicycle. By the way, in this response, one more thing: bicycle that you and I use in the morning to lose our, uh, you know, calories is different from use of bicycle for mobility. When we talk about mobility, we're talking about for your work, for your leisure. When you go from point A to point B, what is that mode of transport that that we use and our vehicles? So, it could be bus, it could be it could be car, it could be two wheeler or it could be a bicycle, but most of us actually use uh, uh, gasoline-based or uh, fuel-based uh, vehicles in that sense. How many people are usually sitting in the car you're using? Uh, very small population actually said mostly alone. Uh, interestingly, good 28% or 20, 29% people have actually said four or more. So if I combine three to four, three on an average. So this is a good response that has come from our, from our group right now, that almost 50% of the population actually uses you know, more than four people in a car. Again, as in that's, some of this is also a reflection point for us that uh, of course we have all honestly given this answer. We, nobody's name is actually flashed out here that, hey, you mostly a lone person, uh, you're, you're bad. But, we, we get a sense that uh, at least in this group, 50% population uses a uh, car wisely, but they use a car. Uh, how many uh, kilometers per week do you use public transport, which could be metro and anything else? It's almost 30, 50 not applicable. A lot of people uh, are in the not applicable uh, this thing as well. Only, only four people actually use less than 10 kilometers. And then there are many who use more than that. So there's a there's a considerable amount of population here which is actually also adapted to public transport. Uh, interestingly, if this this uh, this conversation that you and I are having here, if this was this study was done in a middle class or low income group, although there's nothing called middle class, that's a oxymoronish term. Uh, but if this was in a low income group, this this uh, this survey was done, there'd be more and more people using public transport. So that's another aspect that when we talk about climate change, a lot of low income group people would know their water bill, would know their gas bill, would have live in smaller homes, would actually not even own a car and would have a lot of more public transport. Uh, motorcycle, again, some, some of you have used motorcycles, so it, it is, it, it's mentioned there, but again, that response is another. Uh, amount of how many kilometers you have been flying last year, this Google has made this map. So most of you have fl uh, flown, of course, this is COVID year again, as in, so therefore the, some of this response might not be valid because some of your car response might also not be valid, but uh, aeroplane is another very, very big source of carbon emissions that we're talking about. Uh, ferry doesn't make sense. Again, this is, this is, but still some people have said ferry. I don't know where do we take the ferry, uh, maybe in, on our holidays. Uh, 
how often you eat pork or meat or basically meat in that sense, uh, 42% don't eat meat in this, in this group uh, and, and the rest do. And then there are uh, different groups. Uh, how often do you eat chicken? There's a big group here. Uh, can we scroll down a little? How often do you eat chicken? There are 21 responses. Uh, nobody eats chicken daily. Uh, almost 23% is pure vegetarian, which is, which is linked to the previous response. Uh, and the rest 30, once or twice per week and seldom, uh, some days a week. So almost 70% people eat, eat meat or eat meat uh, regularly, often. Uh, fish, again, India is not, or Delhi is not a big fish eating population. Uh, and therefore that would reflect, uh, that reflects in the response that 42.9% uh, would also be, there's a, sorry, what's the question? Okay, so I, we will do that. Uh, I request the compare the footprint. We can share with you the uh, greenhouse gas intensity of train versus aeroplane uh, in, in, in some time. So, you know, that has fish, has a low, con this thing. Uh, how, many, how much alcohol do you drink in a typical week? Again, two or more glasses, never 38% doesn't drink alcohol and the rest are more of uh, one or two glasses or some glasses per week. So again, it's not a, a huge consumption that we're talking about. Uh, so now in the next point about coffee, I think it's very, very important uh, data, which again, we'll share with you in our final report, but our finding and global findings also say that coffee has a huge carbon footprint, sometimes perhaps more than many, many things that we're talking about. So coffee, uh, the overall uh, greenhouse intensity or carbon uh, footprint of coffee consumption is much more. You know, 81% people actually less than three cups per day, but still a lot of coffee, uh, five or more, three to four cups per day. So on an average, we are talking about only 9% never, 90% drink, uh, tea and coffee. I'm sure we have not done a breakup of coffee and tea. Maybe 50% people do tea here and, and not, and 50% coffee. Uh, how would you describe, there was a question, but how do you describe the amount of durable products uh, do you own? Now, red, lots of things is 25%. <coughs> uh, full of things, more or less average, less things, minimalistic. Uh, there's no one here in this group which is minimalistic. Uh, there's 23% who actually have smaller wardrobe. Uh, there's almost 14 and 33, which is a lot of things for, that we're talking about. Almost 45% uh, of for, uh, what 30 and 37, uh, 37 uh, 47% of of this group, which is half of the group, actually has a lot of things uh, in our, in our wardrobe. Uh, next, uh, Ashim. How do you describe the amount of consumable products that we that we that we use? Almost very careful. The some forty-two percent is very careful in saving purchases and waste. Uh, there's some 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 people have been honest, saying that I tend to shop things and waste them uh, a lot, and I often shop. There's another population, so almost like fifteen percent of the population acknowledges. 15% of the respondents acknowledge that we just buy. We often shop consumables and waste them. Uh, uh, in that sense, there's a huge population that in this group. Spending free time, almost 28.8 and 33.3, more or less, uh, you know, we, we spend time in uh, travel, leisure, sports. Next. How do you describe your way of spending money on different services, which is education, hospital, caring, etc.? cetera? Uh, 19, 33.3% tend to spend less money on services which again could be reflective on, uh, you, know, you know, this is nobody wants to spend money by, by aspiration on, on, on hospital. But of course, education is something, if this, this response was broken down further from hospital to education to other things, maybe we'll have a better response. But yes, there's, uh, there's a response there. Yes? Okay, so this is broadly, uh, it gives a sense of our footprint, of course, uh, in due, we have some of your email IDs. We'll actually give you, uh, send you a carbon calculator specific to India in some time, in a in couple of days, which if you just feed in this data, automatically will also populate 
what is your kilogram or what is your actual carbon footprint? There are many of these apps that are there online, but one could look at. But in nutshell, if you look at this pre-questionnaire, that there's a lot that is going on. There's a lot that we're consuming in mobility, in food, in leisure, in energy, in housing. And these are the points where things are not right in the sense. So very quickly, we could, if we could just have a quick brainstorming right now, we're coming towards the, the second part of our conversation that if climate change is happening, this is what your response or your, or your and mine and everybody's carbon consumption is. What are those things that we want to change as an individual and as a city? So what do you do on a daily basis to reduce your carbon footprint? And what would you like to do if, you, if you're given a choice? So if you can actually open this to this group uh, to really look at, if you have to imagine change, what is that change in your own lifestyle that, that, you, that, you, that you'd want to see? We can have people speak up. I want to reduce the electricity, but uh, you know, I am a villain because I keep telling people and then I get really bad glares and the taunts like here she goes to save the world. So I feel bad, but uh, you know, it's a very difficult thing to do. And then I go and switch it off myself. Very interesting point, Aruja, that you've raised that a lot of shaming happens not of committing the climate crime, but saving the climate is actually shamed by many people. That agya jhola chap, agya ye baut activist, agya isko to dunia bachana hai. Because starting from family. <laughs> absolutely. So a lot of times people say that oh well, as in you know, we earn to splurge to spend without connecting those weather events. So imagine we all are educated people here and our family that we're talking about, your family and my family, we all know that there is asthma every second person has and there are all kinds of diseases. But the moment you go to switch off the, elect uh, the bulb or want to you know, save electricity, you are shamed saying that, you know, why are you being so stupid and why are you being that? So that's another important aspect and that's the irony of the situation that Climate crime is celebrated in this modern society and climate wisdom is shamed uh, by our peers and by, by our immediate family members. Next, anyone? Uh, yeah, may I go? Uh, am I audible? Yes, you are. Okay, so I recently went for Grama Nubu with Pecha when I was in uh, class nine and that was a really good experience because you actually see how um, what happens in the village, and uh, uh, so yeah, I'm from modern school, Parasam Barod, and uh, right now I'm a, I'm I am on a gap year after my undergraduation from Delhi University, and I really uh, respect you, Vim Jindu sir, and I've been that easy for you. So yeah, I mean, um, like I said, you're really shamed for speaking out, like to. Your term there's an over enthusiastic um, environmentalist and whatnot. And yeah, like I, I want to know like how do you stop people from shaming you that way? Uh, so mm. so actually Ria, what you said is absolutely right. And that's that's what Anuja also shared that a lot of times we we would think that when we live in a city called Delhi where if you tried going on a walk in the morning, I went on Yamuna three days ago, and on, you know, before I was five kilometers away from Yamuna, there was this stench early in the morning at 6.30 when there were no buses flying, there was nothing. Still, the city almost reminded me of Wapi. There's a city called Wapi, by the way, uh, in, in Gujarat, uh, Ankaleshwar, and that city always stinks of toxins. Delhi has started to stink like that. And imagine when Delhi's air quality index is so bad, and still we don't really care about it and still we try to shame. So Ria, you're right, as in we will come to that, what can we do uh, with these educated morons <laughs> sometimes that we call ourselves, that we all are in that sense. Anyone else? Yeah, yeah i like to share my experience also. So yeah, I did not give the survey because I was a little late. Yeah, we had the same problem. I had the same problem, like, you know, the shaming thing, but you know, after a while it stopped. 
and the reason being instead of say um i started talking less to the citizen and more to the you know policies and all that stuff you know so when you start telling people don't do this don't do that they react like you know who the hell are you i'm spending my own money you know i can do whatever i want instead when you start really genuinely trying to talk to the authorities like you know do not cut trees or you know try start uh, like you know talking on other things like you know proper cycle tracks and all people start seeing that you know okay she's not telling us you know she's trying to do something in the system and then when you start talking they take you seriously this is what is my personal experience and it took a lot of time you know it did not happen overnight but still yeah shaming is always there you know um, if i could just quickly go next right i think one big part of consumerist culture is replacing things that you use right and yeah. the entire replace repair culture is almost dead if i can sort of call it that uh if your shoes get old for example you don't think about repairing it anymore uh, the the mochis if i can call it, the mochis have almost become redundant and what i am personally trying to do uh, is sort of go back to the repair culture that we grew up as as kids right uh, because i personally believe that can sort of have a huge impact on the consumerist culture where we end up owning way more like you were saying vimlendu uh, than we actually need and use so that's one small bit that i am trying to do uh another thing so i tend to travel a lot uh, we all tend to stay in hotels right uh, i have started carrying my own toothbrush it's a very small thing to do uh because your knee jerk reaction is to use the toiletries that you usually get at a hotel right uh and in whatever little way if it sort of you know reduces the amount of plastic usage it, real minute and tiny things i don't know if i'll be able to uh, you know put in the bigger pieces together but i think baby steps is one way to go about it i think uh, mithun right as in, i i think it's baby steps plus big steps also as in you know one thing that you and i will need to talk today through this entire workshop that we're doing that there are steps that we can actually take because we don't have a choice but to take some of those steps and some of those steps will also be have to be taken by our government like for example if i don't want to use the car then is there a bus or is there public transport or i want to use green energy but if my electricity comes from uh, mota bhai then mm. i can't do anything about it as if it comes from uh, the the power companies or coal thermal power plants so some of these changes will have to be made by our governments also and a lot of those as you 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 talk about small thing called a toothbrush but many of those things can build imagine a billion and a half people saving uh, you know that one plastic bag or buying less or forget about 1 billion people as if you look at the oxfam report that clearly says that the top cream of india or for that matter of the world but if you only look at specifically india data that that 5% of uh, of of india actually consumes 90% of our resources yeah. on all resources so i think we will given the fact that we are in an emergency we are we are not talking about a romantic idea of a better climate but in last 6 months despite lockdown we've seen tsunami we've seen locust attack we've seen uttarakhand we've seen rivers on fire we've seen a heat wave just day before yesterday it was the hottest february by the way this last february was the hottest february that india has ever had in that sense so we need to really talk about it and do something about it for sure but we don't have there's no plan b we will have to work on this plan a in that sense anyone else who wants to go next of yeah, I, can i speak to comment yeah i'd like to touch on something like waste especially at the home level domestic level i think tackling your waste and look and look at it as a resource especially if you can segregate your waste start it at home and make sure that you use your organic waste not only for composting but use it as a manure like things like your egg shells your onion peels your garlic peels i do that myself i powder them and then dilute it in water and add it to the plants the other peels are then made into green compost now the making of bioenzymes from our waste like your banana peels your orange peels now these are things that in small rwas and small colonies we can spread that message which i have been doing myself within schools so that your amount of rubbish or trash that goes out from your house becomes drastically less it does not go to the landfill and of course as bitun mentioned about cutting down on your plastic 
carry that. It's such a simple thing, carrying a cloth bag. That is a habit that every child, every adult, every person can adopt. And I think if you can take up gardening or microgreens as a hobby, it is a wonderful thing. I mean, I am a senior citizen now, and this is what I do. I spend my time gardening, doing myoenzymes, doing uh, greening is what it is. Thank you. Anyone else wants to go next? May I, uh, Mimledu? Yes. yes. Yeah. So uh, I used to, as Susan Ma'am just spoke, I, I, I used to segregate my waste at home and I slowly compost it at home too. And I also kind of started this whole movement in my condominium where I live and went, literally got an army of three, four like-minded people and we actually knocked on the door of every household in our condominium and requested and begged and kind of try to educate people into segregating waste. We did meet with some amount of success, but I can't tell you the mindset, the dominant discourse, which is so, so overpowering and overwhelming as I think Ria spoke about and somebody else spoke about. It was so difficult to break through those mindsets because it seems like people don't notice. It's almost like we become blinded to, uh, to the climate change around us. So uh, the long story short that it's difficult to break through mindsets of people around you because it was the difficult thing actually was to get our condominium to agree to do composting on our premises because 90% of the people were saying, but boo bahut aati hai. You know, it is smelly. We can't have our beautiful homes dirtied by something like compost bins. You know, it's like, it's not my problem. Once somebody comes, takes my garbage away, I can close my eyes and I can forget about it. It's like, it's out of my house. And hence, it's not my problem anymore. It's just that 20 kilometers down Gurgaon, there is a mountain of waste which is coming up and people don't know about it. So uh, I think, yes, each of us, like uh, Mitun was talking about taking those small baby steps. A lot of us, I think, are already doing those baby steps. But I think there needs to be a systemic change. We, 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 can't, we can no longer work with baby steps. We need to do, A, breaking through mindsets also requires systemic changes. So... Uh, yeah, so that's how that's all Yeah, thank you, Vicky. So, you know, I think we need two things, uh, what you rightly said, that one is to take those baby steps. I think three things that we need to do. One is to take those baby steps. Second, what Aruna has also mentioned and uh, what you also mentioned, that we need systemic change also, some things which has to fundamentally shift. And third, I think this isolated stories that we all have of, you know, me doing alone and being shamed by someone, if there are so many of you trying to do very many beautiful things, I think it's important that that forms a collective so that why should good behavior be shamed? It should be the bad behavior that should be shamed. But it's so unfortunate that good behavior is shamed and that can happen when there's a camaraderie, there's solidarity, there's a, I'm not saying union, but almost a support group or a support system or a cultural shift that we perhaps need to invest in rather than just individual small hidden action that we all are taking. So we'll, we'll come to, you know, we have a very interesting game again, uh, which will display, which uh, Ashim will uh, uh, begin with in five minutes. I, we can take a couple of more responses. Anyone wants to speak and uh, before I get Ashim to do this puzzle game of how can we do impact and how that impact, uh, how different actions of art can have a huge impact. Scientifically, we'll, we'll talk about numbers right now. Um, um, I'd like to say something. Sure. Um, this is uh, Purnima. Um, I'm in um, a Pune city and um, what we've done, we have a group, a um, uh, kind of uh, activist group, volunteer group. And uh, together we've decided that most people want to make a change. They want to segregate. They want to uh, make a difference, but they don't want, there they are no systems in place. So we've now set up a system in place because um, uh, we all know that uh, in, in among the dry waste, segregation, we certainly keep our newspapers together and we sell them because newspapers are something that uh, people will, because we know there's a market for the uh, newspapers. But what about the other materials? So whether, whether it's paper, cardboard, metal, glass, e-waste, thermocol, etc. that we don't have anything. So we have a, a nine um, uh, bin segregation. We have it in um, so the corporate, the local corporator and the, um, the, the municipal corporation have together helped us uh, to set up something. Uh, material, we call it a resource. So changing the nomenclature, making it, calling it not waste, but 
uh, a resource makes a big difference. The moment you call something um, a resource, it makes um, a hell of a lot of difference. And people come there, you see, we have it open only on a Saturday morning. People come there, they bring their material and just drop it off in the separate uh, uh, segregated um, compartments. And all of this is sold to a recycler. The money that comes is um, used, uh, put back into the system to help uh, maintain it. And it's working very well. Other areas in uh, Pune City are also making a difference with this. Yeah. It's a, it's a good case study that you've shared that yes, there is uh, you know, resistance, but if there's a will, you could make a difference. And that is a very fundamental difference. So when, you know, that's what exactly uh, Purnima, what you're talking about, that we hear about this fact that our landfill is bigger than Kutub Minar. And suddenly we started realizing that we have a huge landfill only when they, they you know, it was, it was told to us that it is taller than Kutub Minar, our landfill. But as if before that it wasn't, and as if we need to compare it only with a tall monument to understand how monumental uh, our, our waste or our waste crisis is, but we need to really solve it. Because what Vicky was also mm -hmm. talking about that for me, I have seen Gurgaon the last 20 years traveling that how a city called Gurgaon, which has best for, for Fortune 500 companies, or all of them actually have, 100 of them have their offices, top 100 companies of the world have their offices in Gurgaon, but it doesn't have a sewage line, a drainage uh, line, or a proper waste disposal system. So what is that city that we're trying to imagine, or what is that fancy city that we're trying to imagine, which doesn't even have a waste segregation system, which doesn't have a, a, a strong public transport uh, system, which doesn't have a sewage water or a water, uh, or for that matter, rainwater, uh, you know, uh, drainage systems in that sense. So it's, there is that systemic problem and collective problem because everyone thinks that, oh, well, my apartment complex has a fancy, you know, club and that's good. Uh, so club will not do for your air. Your air can't come from, from your club uh, or your, your water can't come. You can't produce water in your, in your club. Uh, the you know a five crore apartment that you that you might be living in, but those resources is shared resources shared between us and shared with other people as well. Last two responses perhaps uh, we can take or one maybe I don't know we don't have much time. Anyone wants to go? Uh, can I just put in a word because somebody just said that we have to make I think Anuja just mentioned that we have to make it cool. Uh, and you just mentioned that I'm not talking about a union, but I think there's something that uh, what it needs to be is a collective movement any which ways. And uh, I know some of it is in place. The fact that uh, it's true that uh, the brave who are ahead of their times will always be shamed and they will be called the idiots. So I've seen it with a lot of people that when they're in the collective, they would just... Uh, overlook certain things but in the morning when they're going for a walk alone they pick up plastic from the roads I've seen this happen in defense colony uh, when it, it becomes a, a collective walk then uh, we are actually uh, walking against a lot of these people who are trying to shame you uh, and it's almost like every other change that has come about in our society in the last 20 years, uh, it, it is probably the only way to do it. So I think uh, you, uh, we might not, uh, uh, the union might have a very radical leftist tone to it, but I would love to use a word like that. <laughs> That's it. You, you yes. nailed it. You nailed it by saying the leftist, my God. I, <laughs> I just, I've heard it millions of times. I, I know. <laughs> I think it's it's everyone right and left and everyone should be part of this. Climate doesn't belong to April exactly or April. exactly this thing. I think it's everybody's uh, concern in that sense. Uh, you know, as we move forward, I think in all of this, what we all are talking about is a term called vision of a city, vision of our city. That what is that city that we want to build? Uh, I think what we would request you to do. Uh, that post this, uh, this session is over, if you could just share two or three lines with us, I'm sure all of you have my email ID or WhatsApp number or something. 
what is the vision of city philosophically and in concrete terms that you actually have that you would want to implement? I think it will be very, very important. Now, quickly, with options that we have discussed, we've, uh, you know, Ashim, if you could just take us through the puzzle game uh, that clearly talks about that if we take certain actions, what we've done, we've broken down all the data uh, that, that we collected, that we've got from our, our secondary sources from all the literature review and from government of India and government of Delhi sources, we've looked at doability of things. Because of course, as we're not talking about fundamentally shifting away uh, from, from survival, and we know that we can't, we can't do this if we really make enemies. We will have to do it slow, although we need to do it fast because the pace at which the climate is changing will have to really act soon enough. But we've identified around 30 doable things without really making your life a lot uneasy and uncomfortable. What are those things that we could do? So interestingly, we are 29 participants that we have right now. We'll go, uh, maybe, uh, you know, you, do you want to increase the size of this so that it's a little readable? Yeah, I could, just a second. Don't do this. Okay, okay. Isko rendo. Ha, upar se view ko bada do okay. Right me. Right me, right me na tha. Box tha na. Sorry. Upar, upar. <laughs> left, left, left. Go just. Sorry. One second, one second. I'm just. Yeah, got it, got it. Got it. Ha, maa se. 125 kar do ya, 150 kar do ya. Nee, yeah. Nee, chodo. Oh. 125. 125. Yeah. I think it's, I can't see much. It's age catching up. Uh, <clears throat> That will be uh, too much so that we can see all the, uh, can we see all the columns in this? No, now you can. 125 was fine. 125 was fine. Please let's yeah. keep it 125. Yeah. Okay. yeah, I think we can see it now. Yes. All of it. So yeah. what we have done, as, as I was saying that, you know, a bit uh, in, in these five options or five domains, we've looked at things that is doable by us. And based on the data that we have from the carbon, uh, from government, we've looked at, you know, what is if what is the potential? So mitigation potential is all of this that you see. MP means uh, mitigation potential. AR column is adaptation rate. So uh, uh, Ashim, if you could just click on number one uh, on adaptation rate. Adoption, huh? Uh, in this, you can say, well, fine. So I'll give, just give an example. And we are doing this as an example, just to see that if 30 of us want we can actually make such a huge difference, for example. If plant-rich food is what you want to do at least 25% times, and if you select 25, clearly this is how much you've actually mitigated. And there's a box that is getting formed un under, which clearly shows that you've saved that much carbon. So if our target as, uh, as a group or as an individual is to really restrict ourselves to 1.5 degrees or not get into a climate crisis based on data, if we do some of those things, and if by selecting at least say 10 of these things or five of these things with high intensity value or high mitigation potential, we can actually do a lot or we can balance our life. So what we're gonna do quickly, just to give a sense, just to you know, gain this, uh, Ashim, you could delete that, that response of yours. We can take some responses from different people. You can select one thing that you think, you go through this, and of course, as in, you know, two people can go for the same one, but we can only have one response. So if it's taken, then you have to think of something else. So think of two, go through this list of 30 actions or 30 options. Think of at least two or three, maybe, because yours might go. And we'll just fill this quickly to understand that how by just doing this, our target of mitigation potential or reaching that, that, that average that is good for the planet can be done. So you choose three options, please. The reason why we are actually doing this, I should also tell you that post this workshop, the way this entire project is actually designed based on today's basic orientation, out of 28 of you who are still surviving this Zoom call, uh, some of you can choose to get involved in a household experiment with us. Uh, you can opt for it, which basically means that out of these 30 things, you choose to do two or four or six or eight of these things for at least two weeks to just look at, is it possible? And you will do it. And then we'll assess the actual calculation and your own experience. 
So adapt to something that you're not doing out of this list of 30 over the next two weeks. We'll come to that, but let's quickly play this game. The reason why we're doing this is so that we can actually do this in real life rather than just game it in that sense. So think of, take two seconds, two minutes break, think of two options, and then we'll start, Ashim will start filling this by taking responses from people. Okay, can we can we go with the responses now? Yeah, I think we can start. Oh, perfect. So whoever wants yeah. to go first, yeah. and you can you know uh, claim your shotgun, your uh, your. I can go. If you could, yeah, someone could just keep raising their hands in on the Zoom feature. If you know how to use that, that would be great, so that there's not clashing in terms of who speaking. Huh. Huh. I see Oritro, you raise your hand. You could probably start. Yeah. Okay, so I I mean I think from nineteen to twenty one. We mm -hmm. can definitely look at those three and then from... Uh, uh, sorry, Arthur, Arthur, right now, because we, you, in, when we do the household experiment, you can choose all three. But right now, for the game purpose, you have to choose one. And you have to choose an adoption rate also. So yeah. if it's 100% adoption, 50% adoption, 25... Okay, I think I think 19, I will choose on 100% adoption. All right. So that is use ebooks instead of hard copies. Yeah. So your 40.06 is what you actually in terms of calculation. Uh, Das, you had raised your hand. Would you like to go next? Um, yeah, number six, solar. Number six, solar. Installing solar. Oh, five, five in the, yeah. Yeah. Um, 75%. 75. No, no, no. No, the first one. Solar water heater we already have. The You're first one is solar. rooftop huh. solar. That's for electricity. 75%, right? Yeah, yeah. All right. Next, I saw Mithun. Mithun, you had your hand up, I think. Uh, yep. Yeah. Uh, reduce and reuse waste. Reduce and reuse waste. No, okay. 25. That is, if you could share the number, that would be number easier. 25. 25. Ah, 25. Okay. And uh, what would be your adoption rate? About 50 odd percent. 50 percent. I'm imagining. All right. Anyone would like to go next? Or. Anyone would like to choose another one? I could go next. Okay. Uh, I just did it actually. Reduce extravaganza in weddings. Okay. <laughs> I just yeah. did it. I did my only son's wedding recently. So yeah, 100% I would say. 100%? No, 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 not 100%. I would say I reduced it by 50% thanks to COVID of course, but 50 percent I, I can claim that much. Okay. So it's a, yeah, because it's a very big number. So would you say 25 or 50 percent? Uh, I think COVID actually helped me to do, reduce it by 50%. Okay. So we'll keep this at 50%. Yeah. I would like to go next. Sure. Uh, number four, because the first time already doing and uh, three is also, but number four, reduction of food loss in supply chain. So when you mean supply chain, does it mean uh, the cooking and the waste of that food or something else? Yeah, uh, yeah. so this basically, what food uh, do you consume? So for example, if I'm, instead of consuming something locally, if I'm getting something from somewhere else, so a lot of food gets lost in that, in that, in that process. Yeah. Uh, because, you know, you're, you're taking it, uh, yeah. So I, yeah. I, I don't buy from the you know package thing. I only buy from my heart or my farmer's market or local shop. So 100% of that. Anyone would like to go next? Ashim, can I come in? Sure, sure. Uh, 24, recycle household waste and 25. Okay. 
and what would be your, be your adoption rate uh, maybe a uh, recycle i'm already been part of it so maybe uh, go up to about 75 okay and reuse reduce and reuse also another uh, 75 Okay, so this is this option has already been taken. So if I take you at twenty four, okay, which yeah. is that is seventy five percent. Okay, all right, perfect. Anyone else like to go next? Pranav has just made his submission, so you can add that twenty six number point. I can't see the chat. Chat. He's uh, Pranav uh, said that he wants use rented goods fifty percent adoption. Use rented items. Fifty percent adoption. Okay. Amalta Gupta says eight switching of appliances when not in use 100%. Switching of appliances when not in use 100%. Rinda you had raised your hand would you like to go next? I actually want to do go for eight. Okay. But, okay, I'll choose something else. anyone from the mobility domain we don't have any from mobility as yet and just to give you a okay i'll go with reduce plastic consumption if that's not taken reduce plastic consumption has not been taken and what would be your adoption rate 75% 75% anyone else shami has said uh, uh, 18 number which yeah. is improved public transport usage of car and conventional yeah. uh, 50% okay and manjushri has gone for eating organic food 100% which is point number 2 yeah eating organic food 100% okay that's uh vegan food number 2 is vegan food yes you want number 2 vegan food yeah and what would be your adoption rate percent 75% implementation 50 or 25% anyone else can someone do twice yes sure then i would like to do the teleworking working remotely okay work from home okay which i have been doing uh, for the past more than one year so it's been 100% nearly okay but would you would this would you be okay so 100% is what you're saying right all right hema wants to go for 27, 27. Has, uh, which is buy second hand goods and 50% adapt, uh, adoption of that 50% adoption of second hand goods okay yeah okay so we can we can pause this here mm -hmm. for for a second now so you know if you look at this this was our target the uh, okay someone wants to aruna wants to go for 2800% which is repair broken damaged goods and items okay yeah so we have actually crossed if you go to the the chart yeah it's gone beyond it's gone beyond so if the total is on top if you see uh, uh, the uh, four cat uh, housing mobility goods leisure आशिम वो पांच पांच कॉलम सबसे टॉप पे जाना जरा और ऊपर आई वांट यस सो फूड इन दिस इफ यू इफ यू सम टोटल दिस 563 307 कैन यू सम टोटल दिस फाइव या या जस्ट सेकंड इट्स इट कम्स टू अराउंड ट्रिपल 28 एंड आवर टारगेट एक्चुअली वाज अराउंड 2100 of course this is a game this is just we've looked at and of course only 10 people have selected but it gives us a sense that 
actually that you know when we talk about this mammoth crisis of climate change by doing these small little steps and simple adapt adaptation and only eight people adapted to you know eight or nine responses we were able to reach our target of mitigation by doing some of some of these things i think uh, that possibility that small change that mithun vicky everyone else was talking about is where all the difference actually lies if you look at these 20 30 things that are listed here what we're going to do right now uh, we'll be in touch with you we are going to send you these as option cards in fact what ashim is going to do right now is to share with you this catalog card on the chat box which you can download uh, uh ashim you can share with them the option cards yes i'm just going to do that and that will all these 30 30 points that are there will be shared with you in terms of what is the mitigation potential and what are those options you can think about this about these things very very doable things and if in coming days uh, when we when we get in touch with you again if you could tell us that if you'd like to participate and do something about some of these things uh, in terms of adaptation if you want to get into a household experiment the idea is this experiment is actually happening in six different countries actually many of you are already doing it as in we call it experiment because it's part of our larger research project to look at if many people start doing many of these things doable things that one mitigates a lot of carbon and at the same time also creates a community culture and politics of actually making it cool making it doable making it every breeze business so you could individually get in touch with us uh, right to us we'll be in touch with you to look at involving yourself in this household experiment it's only for two weeks let's try it for two weeks let's try out that list of 30 things two things or one thing that you want to engage with with two weeks it could be like you know taking public transport or not buying anything for uh for for 15 days or anything for that matter and as i said these experiments are happening in many other parts of the world then we will be able to find that how difficult how easy it is and how possible it is to mitigate some of these these damages or to really work on on climate change anyone else who wants to join we are actually uh, you know nearing the end of our meeting anuj has mentioned a really interesting thing about uh, you know adding this game to schools curriculum and playing this in schools as well which is something that we'd also be wanting to do uh, the idea was of course to do this workshop with a bunch of school students as well and and different youth partners that we have also and also do it on the ground versus doing it through a zoom call so there were a lot of different activities that were actually planned before covid as well and also what ashim said that you know idea is anuja uh, and everyone else that at least let's use this workshop as as a way to initiate any of these 30 things any of these 30 things in our own individual lives and maybe in the process if you're able to inspire ourselves our immediate naysayers and our critics and our uh, members of the family who think we are idiots and our policy in that sense uh, let's try doing this let's try working on this for 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 two weeks three weeks and see because a lot of times we think it's difficult a lot of times we think that you know it's nahi ho sakta it's, it's too difficult or it is impossible it is all wise and it is better said than done and many of you who have shared the story susan ma'am vicky uh, anuja many of you have been able to do that so if my thing would be rather than seeking an answer from you right now if we can really sign up for this whether this through this uh, exercise or otherwise of anything that you would want to do are these 30 things because we are also looking at making this message of these 30 option doable things which might look that aise sab log bar bar bol rahe that it actually has an impact in the long run uh from data point of view to publicize this to reach out to more schools to reach out to more young people to reach out to more aspirational consumers uh, of our country as well and as well as the current high intensity consumers so we would love to love for have you uh, love for you to be part of our our household experiments in coming weeks and not just as an experiment but as a practice uh, any you know we are coming to the close of this session of course as i said there are two parts of this so aaj ka ye ho gaya and household experiment ho gaya 
कुछ इमीडिएट थॉट अगर आपके मन में है आज के सेशन के बारे में एनी थिंग दैट यू और अबाउट क्लाइमेट चेंज एनी थिंग दैट यू दैट यू फील अबाउट टूडेज कॉन्वर्सेशन और अबाउट क्लाइमेट चेंज और अबाउट हाउस होल्ड एक्सपेरिमेंट्स वी कैन स्पेंड फाइव नेक्स्ट फाइव मिनट्स डिस्कसिंग टॉकिंग अबाउट इट इफ एनी वन वॉन्ट्स एनी वन एनी टू शेयर i had like a very small thing to mention i mean and i'm just pertain pertaining to the people who are a part of this workshop and like you said right maybe the 5 8 odd percent of the country is actually the reason for the impact the entire country is facing i would like to believe that almost every single person who is a part of this call itself is a part of network which actually is is the network which is creating this impact on on nature and you know is creating the climate change so if we could just tap into our networks and get the word out uh it can have the huge ripple effect that we are talking about i mean it's not i mean it's one thing to go to your families but i'm pretty sure every single person on this call right is a part of some organization or part of multiple organizations and each of these organizations have maybe 200 300 odd people who are exactly the kind of audience that we are trying to talk to if that impact can be sort of uh, you know pushed in that direction even not through a workshop i mean uh, like since i work in advertising so i tend to sort of look at everything from a very advertising perspective for example that sheet that you shared right uh, which had that list of 30 things if that could be turned into something more of a a pdf or a pamphlet which is more easily consumable right now you had to give us a context right uh, something that works without that uh, pretext or a context and can be consumed as is i think it has the potential uh, to sort of have a bigger impact versus just these closed room conversations right i mean at least that's what i feel the more people we reach out to if we reach out to say maybe i don't know 10000 people even if 100 people 100 fresh people have been impacted and are willing to take it up i think it's something versus just not having that impact i mean that's my pov absolutely right mithun so ashim can you share the catalog card quickly we have made it you have to put it yes, in the sir. chat i can share my screen and show it i can't share it on the chat so what i can do is quickly okay. just uh, no file na there's something called file that you can share but you it is not able to connect to the google drive for some reason i'll just share it here for everyone to see one uh, ashim ha uh, just upload it no just go to this thing called uh, from smash.com just upload it there just upload the pdf okay and it will generate it will generate a link and just drop that link here anyone who clicks on it can download it the google drive ka link de do na apne google drive ka link de do ho jayega wo yeah just wait so big big problem karta hai i can because sure. i can sense ashim's Issue right now, which is why I was saying like if you want to. Just second, I'm sharing the link once. If you guys can access that, that would be great. Yeah, okay. Yes, Anyone... We have our other data there, so we'll actually we'll see what we. This is why I was saying just go to like a third party link, just upload that single PDF. There. Okay, okay. So Mithun, you can help us with that. So I Mithun, uh, okay. uh, we'll we'll uh, Ashim, you work on this for the next three minutes quickly. Mithun and you can chat on the yeah, same. Yeah, yeah. Chat with another side. Mithun, I think the idea here, as you rightly said, is to. change will only happen when this becomes movement it cannot be an isolated two people five people doing it but to begin with if we look at the pre questionnaire that we all filled right now mm-hmm. there's a lot of problem that we have in the room also in True. with me with you with everyone else so in this what we trying to do in step 1 is that is it possible and how much of it is possible so let's first do that once we cross that once we have the data that yes it is possible it is not something that will fundamentally make you a dull person or your life will be really really impaired in many in any way we the idea is to make this movement that's the reason why uh, all of us or these countries are actually working on this one is to establish the impact or the or the bad thing about this and to also talk about hope and options that's why in this entire conversation all the work that we as organization and many other organizations have done including igis and un and everyone else is to look at theek hai there is a problem which is a shared problem which is manufactured by us yeah. but here are 30 things in india that we can do or here are 40 things uh, that one could do so that's what the idea is and eventually of course make it you know make it cool make it it should not be it shouldn't be an extra effort to say that don't waste why should even that be a wisdom like it was okay it was natural for our for our parents to not waste water Uh, or to not waste a sari like imagine a sari became a car cleaner became a door mat to became a razai ka cover uh, 30 years ago uh, you know my my mother my parents are visiting and i know every time a plastic bag came to my house uh, it was actually kept which 30 years ago under the mattress so we all have gone through that uh, 
that civilization and that 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 era and we can be it is cool it is not cool to consume it is cool to preserve conserve save and and be wise set in the sense uh thank you everyone i think uh, you know this link of this catalog card you can individually send it to you on whatsapp because i've been in touch and all of you are in, in somebody's contact or the other uh thanks for participating if perhaps many of you could uh, individually share with us if you want to participate in this household experiment as i said it's your call whether you want to do two things or four things or six things or 10 things uh we really want some of you to be be part of it and after the household experiment we want all of you all of us to meet once again perhaps in 30 days time and to look at how did it actually go did were we able to do it and what were those challenges that we actually faced so if we can meet once again and that time it will be only for an hour perhaps or maybe less but household experiment nobody will be watching you you will be doing it sometimes you can take a selfie and send it to us so that you can become an instagram star uh but uh, that's where it uh, it ends thank you everyone on behalf of swetcha on behalf of all my colleagues who are there on the call and otherwise uh, for participating on this uh, some of you and and for being very active active and vocal about many of these issues and being very forthcoming in uh accepting that it's a challenge and accepting that it's an opportunity at the same time thank you all thank uh, you everyone so Kendu, if i can just say uh, one thing before we say bye sure. uh, you said about these 30 things and uh, mithun was talking about the advertising point of view of creating a visual so i share that advertising film making background too and i thought if we create a calendar of 30 days with this the list so you know calendar can be accessible by everybody and we create those lists and like you know the funda of it takes this many days to change a habit so everybody takes that kind of on them that i am going to change this habit because it's a problem with me now and then multiply it and you see that there will be conversions so i think uh, i i can see that product because calendar to sabke table pe rehta hai you know perfect perfect so anuja you could share with us your email id you can ping us to whoever called you for this and then we want you will take you up on that we want you sure. to make that calendar and and make a film and make a feature film also for us okay, okay. <laughs> this is good luck yeah theek hai perfect thanks a lot anuja okay yeah there's yes. one more thing i was wondering we haven't covered much of this water footprint right which is actually because of climate change going on quite a bit and i think a lot of this water footprint is or water politics is because of uh, extreme consumerism and all so i think even that should be put because you know the moment you say water people really panic uh somewhere kind of like you know adding that would be a great thing yeah so we actually uh we covered water in in our questionnaire uh in terms of consumption and we also looked at a lot of evidence of impact so for example the floods of uh, kedarnath to the recent floods that happened in uttarakhand to the lake and yamuna but uh, yes as in you know cons conserving water what our data currently shows that conservation of water uh, if you have to only choose 30 things is not a huge footprint related carbon footprint related uh, issue but of course it is a big equity related issue it is a huge environmental issue it's a huge public health issue for sure <coughs> so we do talk about saving water okay. in our questionnaire and, and and other things as well that yes water needs yeah to so i was talking about water footprint in terms of consumerism so like you know suppose i have to buy a coke you know uh, a bottle of coke how much water am i consuming a jeans or something like that so i was i mean not in uh, in in a way of uh, reducing water in my on my tap or something like that but you know that way indirect way of uh... so we have hema uh, you right we have actually done that if you look at a lot of our food and many other calculations are based on that like input okay. cost when we talk about producing something for example when you when we produce rice in punjab right uh, you know and uh, then with high intensity water consumption the footprint that that has or as you said that it takes 10 liters to perhaps produce uh, 1 liter or maybe uh, of coca cola or or maybe 1000 gallons to produce one jean so a lot of that has gone in overall looking at you know the, those numbers actually a greenhouse gas has come from that 
production okay. cost and input cost is of production of that from from energy from water from trees to all of that that's how those numbers have been calculated the reason okay. why uh, a particular source is more than the other is based on that okay thank you so much okay thanks a lot everyone and we'll be in touch soon please write to us and uh, please sign up for this uh, household experiment tata bye bye see you bye thank